morning children how are you today i am teacher ronald and i am your art six teacher welcome to our lesson in art six quarter two module five and lesson two today you will learn about on how to apply skills in layouting and photo editing using new technologies hardware and software in making a poster at the end of this lesson you should be able to apply skills in layouting and photo editing using new technologies hardware and software in making a poster before we start our new lesson let's have a review first from our previous lesson about the elements and principles of layouting Number one principle of layouting is purpose and audience. Approach layout the same way that you do writing. Determine your audience, define your purpose, and communicate your message. When you are writing, you present information in a logical order, so do the same when you lay out. Next is organizing information. Photographs, pull quotes, decks and headlines should be organized. Next is getting their attention. Good design balances function with form, consistency with contrast, and places successful communication with the reader above all the other considerations. Think of layout as a jigsaw puzzle. Every piece fits together to make the whole. Another is balance. Balance is another word for concerns about symmetry and asymmetry. Symmetry provides stability and rest for the eye, while asymmetry creates tension and visual interest. Finding ways to create balance often depends on the piece. The fifth principle is alignment. Unify the appearance of your layout by aligning the elements. Next is repetition. Repetition without variety becomes monotonous. So use a photo or graphic to add interest. The repetitive elements create visual coherence while the occasional incongruous element creates contrast, the visual spice. Then, emphasis. Use a hook to get the attention. Anything from an interesting photo or graphic to catch the eye. And the last principle of layouting is proximity. Place related elements in proximity and separate unrelated elements. Now let's come to the elements of layouting. Number one is the style sheet. The style sheet is one of the best features of electronic publishing. Attributes such as typeface, type size, and leading can be predefined, making the job of formatting your project quick and easy. The second one is organizing information. Photographs, full quotes, decks, and headlines should be organized and the last element of layouting is layout tools there are a variety of organizational tools that you should use to improve the look and readability of your layout since everybody is now ready for our new lesson please fasten your seatbelt and relax but I just want to remind you that during our lesson, please be ready with your materials like ball pen and papers for the activities. Let us now start our lesson with unlocking of difficulties. Number one is layout. Layout is such an important part of making a poster. 
it is a way in which text or pictures are set out on a page. Number two is photo editing. Photo editing is the changing of images. These images can be digital photographs, illustrations, prints, or photographs on film. Number three is computer software or often called as software. It is a set of instructions and its associated documentations that tells a computer what to do or how to perform a task. Number four is scanning. Scanning is absolutely essential to digital painting. This helps to digitize the artwork. This is useful in the texture like real canvas and watercolor to make texture supports or patterns which you can apply as backgrounds for your paintings. Number 5 is GIMP or GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is a powerful and versatile software that can be used to create beautiful digital painting and digital posters. And number six is poster. Poster is a kind of a placard or announcement that has its goal which is the communication of information through words and pictures or symbols. Now, let us explore by studying the four main points in using GIMP. Number one is changing the size or dimension of an image scale. When you first open your image in GIMP, chances are that the image will be zoomed so that the entire image fits in your canvas. The thing you notice for this example is that by default the window decoration at the top of the GIMP will show you some information about the image. Notice that the information at the top of the window shows the current pixel dimensions of the image. In this case, the pixel size is 1225 by 1280. To resize the image to new dimensions, we need only to invoke the scale image dialog. In the scale image dialog, you will find the place to enter new values for width and height. For example, if you knew that you wanted your image to have a new width of 600px, you can enter that value in the width input and the height will automatically change to maintain the aspect ratio of the image. As you can see, entering 600px for the width automatically changes the height to 627px. If you want to specify a new size using a different type of value or other than pixel size, you can change the type by clicking on the px spinner. Once you are done scaling the image, don't forget to export the changes you've made or file export. Number two main point in using GIMP is changing the size or file size of JPEG. You can also modify the file size of the image when exporting it to a format like JPEG. JPEG is a loosely compression algorithm, meaning that when saving images to the JPEG format, 
you will sacrifice some image quality to gain a smaller file size. As you can see, even at the quality setting of 80, the image is significantly smaller in file size or in 77% size reduction, while the image quality is still quite reasonable. When you finished any image modifications you are doing and are ready to export, simply invoke the export image dialog. You can now enter a new name for your file here. When you're ready to export the image, just hit the export button. This will then bring up the export image as JPEG dialog, where you can change the quality of export. From this dialog, you can now change the quality of the export. When you are happy with the results, hit the export button to export. Number three main point in using GIMP is crop an image. Cropping is just an operation to trim the image down to a smaller region than what you started with. The procedure to crop an image is straightforward. You can either go to the crop tool through the tools palette or you can access the crop tool through the menus or tools transform and tool crop. Now, you can left click anywhere on your image canvas and drag the mouse to a new location to highlight an initial selection to crop. And the last main point in using GIMP is rotate or flip an image. If you want to flip your image, the transform menu offers two options, flip horizontally or flip vertically. This operation will mirror your image along the specified axis or image transform. Image rotation from transform menu is constrained to either 90 degrees, clockwise or counterclockwise, or 180 degrees. Let's now have your activity. Make your own digital poster. In this activity, you will develop an own poster applying the skills in layouting and photo editing using new technology and establish the relationship between images, text, and ideas in creating a powerful and persuasive poster. The materials for this activity our personal computer and GIMP application. These are the steps and procedures in making your own digital poster. Number one, open your GIMP, create a new layer, and insert the background you want to use. 
A textured image or flat background will do. Number two, create a new layer for each of the objects or elements you will include in your poster. Import, scan your image and or photograph in the computer. Save the image as a file. Number three, retrieve the image and or photograph it. Insert it on the layer that you want to use. Color the image, enhance, resize, move image according to the layout or concept that you have in mind. Number four, insert your text. Use the text and type tool from your toolbar to create and place text in the pictures. Click on the picture with the type tool and select a box the size of the area you want to add text. Type in the box, then adjust the size of the text box. And finally, print your finished poster. For activity number two, make a poster for a new product that you are going to sell. So, in this activity, you will develop a poster for a new product that you are going to sell applying the skills in layouting and photo editing using the new technology and establish the relationship between images, text, and ideas in creating a powerful and persuasive poster. And the materials are coloring materials, white cartolina 9 by 12 glue sticks and digital camera here are the steps in making a poster for a new product that you're going to sell for number one look for examples of print or internet posters that you think would give you an inspiration in designing your own poster and ask yourself why are products attractive to look at? Why do I like to buy them? What qualities of product cost me to give it a second look? The next step is decide what product you would like to promote. It could be a product to wear, an item to use, a food to eat, a movie to see, or an event to attend whatever product you choose to design a poster for see to it that you know it well number three make several pencil sketches to visualize the ideas you have in mind consider what to emphasize in the design study where you will place the most important features of your design number four Include in your sketches the fonts that you will use to form the words or letters. Choosing the types of font and how you will arrange them within space are important in communicating the message you want the product to tell its viewer. Number 5. Select, clarify, and simplify, and develop at least two ideas from your sketches. And finally, Move on to the computers to scan and save pictures. Open the software to create lines, shapes, and color. Arrange fonts and even combine photos into the design. Apply the skills you have learned from layouting and photo editing. For your activity number three, make a poster for a clothing tag on your own fashion design. In this activity, you will develop a poster for a clothing tag of your own fashion design applying the skills in layouting and photo editing using the new technology and establish the relationship between images, text, and ideas in creating a powerful and persuasive poster. Materials for this activity are personal computer or tablet, an article of clothing such as jeans, shirts, dress, 
cup and etc. These are the steps or procedures in making a poster for a clothing tag of your own fashion design. For number one, look for an example of clothing tag that inspired you to make your own design. Number two, identify the name of your item, the price, the materials it made of, size, brand, or store. Number three, design the overall shape, front and the back of tag. It will also have to consider the elements and principles of design needed to communicate a particular message about the store or the item in which it will be sold such as line, shape, color, pattern, font, or typography and emphasis. 4. Attend to the fonts or typography to be used in the design of your tags. Ask yourselves, what would be the most important information that we want our customer immediately notice? How do we attract the customer to it? How do we use the various kinds of the fonts to help us achieve what we want? Number 5. Identify the target customer for the item and the design appropriate to the customer. Number 6. Prepare several sketches to consider as possible design. Number 7. Use any digital imaging software to allow you to illustrate and control the use of font type and style. Manipulate the tools to create shapes, add color and images. And print your finished products. Here is the rubrics of activity number 1, 2, and 3 that will serve as your basis of your score. The criteria of these rubrics are design and creativity. For the design, 5 points if you can apply the design elements with excellent skills. 4 points if you can apply design elements with great skills. 3 points if you can apply design elements with fair skill. 2 points if you can apply design element but had some difficulty. And 1 point if you can barely design element. For the creativity, 5 points if you can show excellent attention to detail. 4 points if you can show great attention to detail. 3 points if you can show good attention to detail. 2 points if you can show signs of imagination in some parts of the posters. And 1 point if you can barely show imagination in the poster. And now, you are going to apply what you have learned. You are going to sell or market a food product. Lay out a poster of a food product you are going to sell. Below is the rubrics for the basis of your score. And that's the end of our lesson in R6. I hope that you have learned a lot from this topic. This is Teacher Ronald signing off. Bye-bye!